Hello everybody, uh, I'm going to be going over the gear changes and what that means for building for wizard on the new patch. So, as many of you know, they increase stat changes to now basically reward you per each tier, uh, going up to unique. So, purples give you 5, legendaries give you 6 of a base stat, and uniques give you up to 7, blues are now giving you 4, and it changes how you kind of want to build as a wizard because you're very stat dependent. Uh, I'm going to be going over basically what kind of stats you want to begin with, and then what I build to get the um, best return on what items I use. Now starting off, uh, the main three stats that you want to be building are going to be Vigor, Will, and Knowledge. Those are your three main stats, as um, Vigor is your HP, and you always want to try, at least in my opinion, to get as much HP as possible, as uh, on a Wizard, your main defense is basically just going to be building like a tank. Uh, now, if you can be super high casting speed at 45 knowledge around that area with very good damage at 34 will, 35 will in that area, and also have a ton of HP at the you know mid-30s, then you'll have up to 140 HP with 310 move speed. So not only will you be tanky, you'll be fast, and you'll also have a lot of magic power bonus. As you can see here, I almost have uh, around 70% with my book out. And on top of that, I'm also on 41% magic damage reduction and 24% uh, physical damage reduction. So let's get into the, the different slots and what you want to prioritize in terms of items to use. Now, for the boots, I'm going to start off with the occultists. Uh, these are now, in my opinion, depending on what you need the most, probably going to be your go-to. Uh, it used to be lightfoots were good, but now, really, you can achieve good move speed, and keep in mind, you're dropping 8 stat points for, you know, around like a, what is this, a 2 movement speed boost. So, I can roll 5 additional move speed on this, and I can get to 10 movement speed, whereas if I wore purple lightfoots, I'm only on 12, here I have basically 10, and, you know, I'm getting 8 stat points in return. So now, in my opinion, you should always be wearing only light, uh, sorry, occultist boots. Those are going to be your best in slot boot slot. And lightfoots, you can use them if you really want to, but you're really giving up on a lot of stat points here that let you kind of play around with different stats over the board. Now, moving on to leggings, um, it really depends what you need the most. Now, here, because I've hit sort of the knowledge and will caps that I really want to get to, I'm going for padded leggings, which have base vigor. Um... These are going to probably be the best option that you can have considering the other slots that you'll uh, have available to fill out with the base stat of gear. Um, but these padded leggings are really good. If you want to go with leather chassises as well, those are a very, very good option. It really depends what you need more. If you need more vigor, then you're going to go for the padded leggings. If you need more knowledge, then you'll go for the chassises, and that will sort of like fill each other out. Uh, for the ring slots... These are really, really simple. Uh, they've always been the same, but you just want to stack either Will, uh, Knowledge, or Vigor Rings. Uh, here I have one Will and one Knowledge, just because I've got quite a lot of Vigor with the set, considering I have some Gold Gear. And so yeah, you don't really benefit from any other ring. Some people say you can go Agility for the move speed, but genuinely it's not worth it. It's honestly better to just get like a two movement speed roll on a ring, uh, kind of like that one, and use that instead. So you only want to be using Vigor, Knowledge, or Will Rings. And as for the gloves, you have two options here. You have the Reinforced Gloves, which have Base Vigor. Now, obviously, on these, you want to try and roll um, a different type of stat, like maybe Knowledge or Will, Magic Power, etc. Um, but otherwise, in the Merchants, I don't have it unlocked, but uh, in the Leathersmith, you can unlock the Reinforced, or sorry, not Reinforced, the uh, Rawhide Ruby Silver Gloves. Those will give you both four... Uh, knowledge and three will as a base stat. So those are really, really good. Those are basically like the occultist boots of gloves, and you can craft those with Ruby Silver in the Leathersmith after completing the um, the Tier 2 quest. So this is my alt account. I don't have any quests completed on this character. But yeah, the Ruby Silver Rawhide gloves or the Reinforced gloves are going to be your go-to. Uh, as for chest, you can really play around with this with all of the different robes. I'm using a golden robe just because this has such good rolls on it. And the nice thing about golden robe is you actually have 50 magic resistance on it, which people overlook quite a bit. But golden robe, higher tier, 
is definitely something that you should aim towards just because um, if you look at, for example, a Oracle Robe or something like that, you're only getting 25 magic resistance and that 50 base plus 5 vigor and the low movement speed and the magic damage reduction all stacks up and you can get some really, really high MR. Uh, just with this robe, it can boost you by, for example, right here, going from 26 to 41. So you can do the math. It's quite a lot of magic damage reduction, and that really does help you in those 1v1 trades with other mages. Uh, obviously, you can use the Oracle robe or the, um, the Will robe. And, I mean, you should try and always aim for the Golden robe if you're playing at a higher level. But either Will or Knowledge on the robe is also totally fine. Uh, moving on to the cape. The Golden Cloak, in my opinion, is always going to be the best. Keep in mind that the three all, you're basically benefiting over the board by 21 stat points, and that's in everything. Now, obviously, you know, like resourcefulness and dexterity and agility and, you know, strength, you're not really going to benefit as much from as other classes, but that strength is giving you extra HP. You're getting three vigor, which is another nine HP. You're getting um, tw three more agi, so that's three more move speed. You're swinging faster with your dexterity. Like, over the board, 3-all is always going to be the best. You should always try and aim for a knowledge cape. However, it's totally fine to um, to wear, like, a vigor or a will or a knowledge cape. Obviously, you don't really want to be wearing any agility or any dexterity or any strength capes. So try and go for the golden cloak. Otherwise, you can use the will cloak, the splendid cloak, the uh, the knowledge one, and then also the vigor one. Going on for helmet, now you have three options here. I'm using the Golden Leaf Hood because it has an 8 MR, it's Vigor, I've hit my Knowledge Caps, so I, I can use this now. But you can substitute this with anything from a Leather Cap to also a Wizard Hat. And the most important thing is just making sure that you kind of like balance your stats around the board. Uh, and I'll talk about the balancing that I've done here in a bit. Uh, otherwise here, Leather Cap... Uh, wizard hat or golden leaf hood is going to be your best in slot uh, for mage going on to necklace now I'm only wearing this because the rolls are so good and also I benefit really heavily from the magic resistance from this If I take this off I basically almost get 11% magic resistance from this necklace alone and that really brings me over uh, the cap and I'm getting so much MR uh, that paired with the innate MR on golden gear I'm I'm hitting some crazy defense bonuses here uh so to touch on the necklace a little bit necklace of peace in my opinion will always be your best in slot it's going to be your number one max hp is probably going to be the role that you benefit from the most considering that vigor you know doesn't actually get as much out of it as a necklace of peace would so let me see if i can find one here right so nine hp that's going to be really really big otherwise if you have a legendary or above you can use a Phoenix Necklace because that actually gives you more true magic damage than you can stack normally through other items in the game. It lets you go over that cap of 11. Uh, so that's also really good. But otherwise, you want to use a Necklace of Peace or uh, a Bear Pendant that gives you Vigor. Just because um, you really don't need to focus on the amulet that much like the base stat is not the most important in my opinion it's really important that you get like one all attributes movement speed max hp and your magic damage so your pendant can really be whatever you need whether it be knowledge uh whether it be will whether it be that true magic damage because you've already hit kind of like the other soft caps just making sure that you balance that really well is super important um moving on the stat points so my in my opinion you try and get to at least 30 Vigor. 30 Vigor is a really, really big milestone because you get to a uh, health recovery bonus that you can basically sit in the storm and not take any damage. And that's really, really big in case, like, you know, your team dies, you need to run away, you need to hide on the edge of zone. It really helps you secure your gear and make sure that you can kind of, like, survive in the zone. And not only that, but you're hitting a ton of HP, which is really, really useful in team fights. You want to have as much HP as possible. Um, keep in mind, like, your clerics will build a lot of magical healing. So if you're playing with a cleric, for example, and you have a lot of HP, you're benefiting more from their magical healing by having higher caps, meaning that you have bigger HP pools, their heals are not being wasted by overhealing too much, and over the board, you're just going to benefit from it so much. Um, I try and hit 30 to 35 will. That's, like, a really, really important number nowadays because of the will scaling, and that's where you're at a good spot with your interaction speeds, your damages, and your debuff duration, 
So it, it's really important that you stack will to 30 to 35. Uh, knowledge, you want to try and hit 40 knowledge as fast as possible. And then after that, you want to try and stay around 40 to 50. So anywhere between 40 to 50 is really, really good. You're at a really nice point. Um, and as for move speed, I try and just hit a little bit above 310. If I can go anywhere above 310 to 315, that's like your sweet spot. So whenever you're holding your book out, for example, you're still positive uh, move speed. You can move around fast while casting. And that's also super, super, super important. Uh, move speed is really, really important for kiting as well. Uh, fighters have sprint, for example. So whenever you pull out your book, you haste yourself, you put it away, you'll be at like 340 move speed. You can outrun a fighter chasing you. And that's also super important. Uh, the last thing you want is some fighter popping sprint and just running in your face and being able to outrun you. Um, now moving on to the MR and PDR. These you really shouldn't worry about, to be honest. Um, as long as you're innately stacking gold gear and whatnot, you'll get decent numbers here. Uh, and then finally, magic power bonus. I try and get between 50 to 60. And then obviously with your book out, you're going to get that benefit from the extra magic power. So anywhere between 50 to 60 is perfect. Um, I hope this guide helps you. And this is a quick guide going over all of like the gear changes in the new hotfix number 28. I hope you enjoyed the video and have a nice evening.